Hi, welcome to this review of Pixelmator from videotechreviews.com. I'm sure you're already aware of what Pixelmator is since you're watching this review, but basically it's uh, very similar to Photoshop. It hasn't got quite as many features, but I do prefer the interface. And it's a lot cheaper. When you start up Pixelmator, you'll get this welcome screen. That's if you've registered. If you haven't registered, you'll get a dialogue saying use demo, enter serial, or uh, purchase. You hit a uh, demo to just try the demo if that's what you're doing. Or you can hit enter serial and it will have a sheet come down and you just uh, type or paste the serial in and hit OK. Once you've done that you'll get this welcome screen which says create new image, open existing image or start using Pixelmator. Unless you click show this dialog on startup, if you untick that it uh, won't come up again. If you click open existing image get an open dialog where you can select a file you've already created. Or you can if you cancel that you can hit file new and get the new dialog up. Here that you have some presets for the most commonly used sizes such as 1640 by 480, 800 by 1224 by 768, 1280 by 800. Uh, also, sort of banner sizes for if you're creating a banner for your website and medium, rectangle, wide skyscraper. Uh, some other sizes such as A4 size, A5. Uh, size to create a iPhone desktop image for wallpaper for your iPhone or an iTunes artwork. Or you can copy from the clipboard. If you've got something clip, uh, on your clipboard, it'll copy the size of that. Or you can hit custom. When you uh, do a custom size, you enter your width, your height. You can select whether what you're typing in is in pixels, inches, or centimeters. And the resolution, pixels, and inches, or pixels, and centimeters. You can save your preset. So if you created your own size here and your own resolution, you just make up one. Whoops. Uh, and let's put that to like 98 or something. And then you could hit save as, give it a name. It's already put in the size that you typed in there, so you don't have to type that in if you want it in the preset name group such as is it for like more for screen web or print you can manage your presets there's all the presets there you can select one delete it or add another one cancel ok um, let's just create some sort of standard sort of size let's just do this and hit ok now you're at the main interface of Pixelmator. As you can see it is very very similar to Photoshop. Here's your tools. With your select tool for moving, just dragging and moving stuff around. You've got your rectangle marquee tool. You've got next your lasso tool. You've got your magic wand tool which is very good, it's very good, uh, very easy to use and I'll demonstrate it later. You got your crop tool, your slice tool which is very hand handy for doing stuff for web graphics, your clone stamp tool, good old pencil tool, the eraser tool, the brush tool, the gradient tool, the paint bucket tool, blur tool, sharpen tool, 
eyedropper toe, text toe, hand toe, which basically, if I had a long document, I could scroll and stuff, kind of move around. Uh, zoom tool. You can right click if you zoomed in, zoom out, and fit to window. You've got your foreground and background selection, so you can like, select a foreground colour instead of black, you could select green or something. Close that. Here, you have edit in standard mode, which is what I'm in. Edit in quick mask mode for doing masking. And here, you have full screen. As you can see, it's made it a little less distracting because you can't see your wallpaper. It's made um, the menu bar auto hide, but you can always put your mouse up to get to it. Let's get out of that. And uh, I'll now show you the magic wand tool. How you use it is basically you to select the area you want, you hold the mouse button down and drag. Then that area there is selected. You can also the more you drag the more the more you drag the more tolerance it adds, but then if you drag back in, it takes away some of the tolerance and puts it down uh, up the mouse, down with the mouse to add and remove the tolerance like that and then you've got the area selected then you can do whatever you want with that selected area so it's very very easy to use a magic wand tool and it seems to work very very well so a very handy feature to have You have your menu bar up here, with, like a typical Mac application. You've got your preferences, which are, by default you've got show the welcome screen on startup of the application, but you can select not to have it. And if you untick that, uh, like I showed when we started up, you can reactivate it there. New image content, you can have it with a white background by default which is what is on default or you can have black or transparent I'm going to put it on transparent as I tend to prefer to have that as the default you can hide unnecessary uh, palettes when using adjustments or filters show action tool tips show information labels transparency grid size and color ruler you can select where you want your default units of the ruler to be in pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points and a few other things guides you can select the color of the guides at the moment it seems to be kind of like a turquoise no that's more well anyway you can select a different color using the default Mac OS X uh, palette there. Whoops. You can select a color for your grid, your grid outline uh, in pixels or inches or whatever. You can select subdivisions and for slices, which I said uh, comes in quite handy for doing web graphics, you can select the color of the slice. And whoops, keep uh, keep getting rid of that, but. Um, preferences, the last tab is updates. You can select to notif be notified when there's a new vi uh, version of Pixelmator. When you go into the application, it will tell you automatically when it detects that. Or you can just hit straight away, check now right there, and it will tell you if you're up to date or not. In this case, you're up to date. Pixelmator 1.5 is currently the newest version available. And I forgot to go back into normal mode.